the Independent Investor Channel. Um, this will be um, an account of uh, my site visit to Aduro Clean Technologies, which was um, one of the most um, enlightening experiences that I've ever had, um, not only in my life, but as it pertains to um, the investing opportunity. And I think where we are now in these current times, especially in the face of volatile markets and um, companies like Aduro and many others that uh, we cover and we really try to comb over. And um, a lot of companies can be discredited within the first couple of minutes of, of, of review. Um, there's a lot of companies doing a lot of things out there. We try to identify those companies that have that special pedigree. And this video is, is aimed more toward education. For you guys that follow the Adoro story, um, you're going to want to listen to this, review it on the onset, and re-review the content because in my Q&A with Anil Jawar, and a big thanks to him and the entire Adoro team for allowing me the opportunity to capture this footage, you are going to want to immerse yourself in um, the questions that I'm going to frame to you um, and then allow Anil to offer his response to the questions that I had when I was actually up there at the Aduro site and facility. Um, I want you guys to get an understanding and a feel for what I felt when I was there. Um, the, the vast majority of, of people who do their due diligence or at least are even introduced to this opportunity um, will nary yet find the time um, that I did on a very unique opportunity to actually make a site visit. When you talk about due diligence, there is no better culmination of a deep dive on a company, their vision, what they're trying to do, um, than getting in there and feeling the culture. And Anil was able to walk me through um, the inception of the technology, the equipment that is utilized, um, kind of give us some insights on the evolution of where he, we have been, um, some uh, expectation of where we could potentially go. Uh, I just do want to give you guys um, a heads up at the onset to have some fair expectations that Anil used the, the term startup with me many, many times. Um, I typically don't like to use that uh, when I refer to a company like Aduro that's been around for going on 10 years, but not have stepped into the public limelight, but just a couple of years ago to really immerse themselves into the public limelight and really look to tell the story. Okay. So the intention of this is to engage in a QA and a uh, with myself, the independent investor channel for the viewing and subscribership audience to the channel with the chief scientist, Anil Jovar. And hopefully by the end of this, you can have a better understanding of where Aduro has been, where they are currently, and more importantly, where could we could forecast uh, to see where Aduro could go in the coming months in the short term, yes, medium term out maybe to the end of 2023 here, uh, and especially where we could be ultra long here when we're talking about five to 10 years down the line in where we could potentially see this technology integrating in the commercial space in a full commercial capacity. Hopefully this allows you some insight to the baseline that exists and the insights that I was able to glean with my site visit here just recently of Aduro Clean Technologies. Please enjoy. Uh, hi, I'm Anil Jawa, Chief Scientist with Aduro Clean Technologies. Uh, we are just going to go in our R&D lab uh, where we do our basic uh, understanding and testing of the raw materials before we actually move it to a continuous uh, system. So this is where we start our basic uh, uh, testing for any material. So we start with a small reactor system which is uh, 5 ml. It's just a batch reactor which is completely closed. What we can do is like we can do multiple of uh, reactors like this and put it in this basket. This is a fluidized bed heated sand bath uh, where we can maintain temperature, keep the mixing going so that we can uh, do the reaction and at a certain residence time we can take the reactor, we can take the uh, uh, open the reactor, look at the products and find out like whether the conversion happened or not. So this system is just for testing whether the chemistry is happening or not. And once we figure out like it's working, what we can do is like we can try to scale up in a slightly larger reactor so that we can recover the product and analyze it. 
So, once we are done with this reactor system, we actually transfer the data from here and do testing at uh, our larger reactors. So, this is how we started right like we actually start testing with the uh, virgin raw materials like uh, PE, PP, polystyrene these are uh, virgin materials. So, we test the chemistry whether it is happening or not and then these are a uh, reclaimed material basically after post consumer for mechanical recycling this is a uh, recycled uh, uh, polyethylene polypropylene pellets. So, we, we kind of expanded our test to this uh, uh, material. And then we also test what we call is uh, as is material from different farm or, or reject of recycling material. And what we typically do is with our chemistry we are able to produce uh, uh, in case of polyethylene we get like a wax kind of material where the carbon number ranges from C8 to C100. Uh, this could be used for a variety of purposes actually we can uh, tune the carbon number range so that it could be used for either as a naphtha cracker feed or we can tune it to produce high, high molecular weight waxes which could be used for uh, lubrication purposes. So, in case of uh, polyethylene what you get is uh, uh, this waxy material which uh, melts about uh, 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, in case of uh, polypropylene uh, because it is a branch molecule we get branching uh, saturated hydrocarbons so which is more like a liquid at uh, room temperature conditions. And we have also done testing by mixing uh, polyethylene and polypropylene. Uh, you get like a nice flowable product when you mix both polyethylene and polypropylene. Uh, we have done some uh, reactions and testing with the polystyrene. So, our chemi chemistry basically work on uh, uh, chemical molecules like especially like the chain growth polymers from uh, pure cycle right where they are using a solub uh, solubilization technique. What we are doing is here we are taking this molecule apart like so our process is like a a chemical scissor is chopping the molecules and we are what we are creating is like a, a feed for a naphtha cracker. So, where we can actually use this material as a feedstock and what we get in the end is like a virgin material like brand new material. So, what we are doing is replacing the fossil fuel instead of getting those uh, feedstock from uh, uh, crude oil or other natural resources we are we are just creating that. So, our our product will be as new as like a, a virgin material like once we use that to create we can create virgin material. You know, what Anil just said there about the ability to take what is uh, typically waste and not only that, but damaging waste that all too often ends up in the in the landfill, um, over 80% is ending up in our landfill. And I think a lot of people out there are not aware of this. But his statement about covering the different types of virgin feedstock as well as some of the stuff that has been um, mixed product as well as some of the chemistry that they're looking to mix uh, both back and forth really spoke to the ability to not rely on natural uh, production through fossil fuels to provide us the necessary feedstock to produce more plastic. Plastic is not going away. Um, but to use the Aduro Clean Technologies uh, platform in an, in an opportunity to take what would have ended up in the landfills and to use that material to uh, pr produce a, a, a usable product on the back end, whereas we would typically have to rely on our valued natural resource source, i.e. our fossil fuel, uh, to provide that, that feedstock in production of, of new products plastics. So I found this segment intriguing when Anil was breaking down the thought processes that exist with the Duro and the ability to take what would have just ended up as a detriment to both businesses because it's too expensive to recycle um, as well as an environmental detriment, i.e. ending up in the landfill and actually taking that putting it to the rigor of the Aduro chemistry and actually producing a more valuable resource on the back end by nature of um, either changing the chemistry or controlling and monitoring the chemistry in a way that produces a favorable outcome on the back end. So basically once you feed it in the naphtha cracker like which typically ranges from C5 to C12 hydrocarbons and you can convert that into ethylene ethylene molecule could be used to uh, convert into polyethylene which could be provided uh, uh, to the uh, consumers for making like different uh, products which could be used by uh, co uh, common consumers. 
and once uh, it's used like nowadays most of it is discarded uh, which goes for recycle but typically only about 10 to 12 percent is recycled most of it is uh, in, uh, about 10 to 12 percent is incinerated and rest are like uh, remaining 80 to 90 percent is on the sorry remaining 80 percent is in the landfill so during the process of um, discussion with anil i continually asked him about cross comparing uh, aduro with some of the few technologies out there um, that of which I think all will have or find their potential place depending on the viability of each of those respective technologies. However, Anil was uh, very clear in establishing Aduro's place in how they go about deconstructing the plastic molecule and even the potential of um, uh, um, really tweaking the chemistry to ensure that they can, in some cases, provide a feeds uh, uh, to provide a usable product on the back end to uh, lend itself available to upcycling. Um, he mentioned this a, a number of times uh, during our discussion, and he really wanted to separate what Aduro is doing um, with regard to their um, surgical uh, deconstruction, the careful deconstruction of molecules and not necessarily the complete um, destruction of the molecule, whereas some of the um, uh, pyrolysis, some of the known high heat input and high energy uh, inputs, which come with it a premium via cost, uh, cross compares to the Aduro technology. So basically when you compare uh, our technology with uh, different technologies, like uh, especially uh, thermolytic approach, uh, so they they are using uh, really relatively high temperature like temperatures over 400 degrees celsius and the product which they obtained is not like a saturated it's a mixed bag of stuff which contains uh, some saturated hydrocarbons and some unsaturated hydrocarbons whereas with our process uh, we do it at relatively milder conditions temperatures less than 400 degrees celsius and the product which we get is uh, uh, like almost 97 percent of it is saturated hydrocarbons so we don't need like significant uh, post-processing. Whereas in case of pyrolytic product, what we need is a hydrogenation process in order to make it usable and stable, which is very expensive process. In this segment, I asked um, Anil to discuss what I've heard um, floated when associated with the uh, AduroClean Technologies uh, technology, hydrochemilytic, um, and I've heard the word novel in that, you know, in all of the years history of, of you know, chemistry and evolution, et cetera, um, there are aspects about this chemistry that uh, set itself um, above and beyond the rest. I'm trying not to be as biased. I'm trying to be as impartial as I can um, when I explain, you know, my interpretation of, of what I see through my lens when I look at a Duro but let's hear from Anil on his answer to my question to him about the uh, novelty of hydrochemolytic uh, process as it pertains to the technology at AduroClean Technologies. So a few, uh, few things about novelty is like we operate at uh, milder temperature conditions. Uh, we don't need the external source of hydrogen, like basically we don't need molecular hydrogen. Our process used bio-based substrate to produce in situ and saturated. It's a one-step process compared to you pyrolyze, create a product and then uh, hydrogenate it. We, we can do all in one step. And the other advantage is we can uh, uh, handle moisture and other contaminants, right? Whereas uh, in, in case of pyrolysis, you, you will be limited to moisture because you are losing energy. In, in our process, we are able to handle moisture. I wanted to get Anil's impression on that the industry as a whole and whether or not other technologies would find its place um, in solving the plastic problem. Um, we've discussed a lot, we've heard it thrown around that the plastic problem is so enormous. Um, even now, as we speak, it's out of control and where we are looking to go into the future with the population growth and the expected expansion of plastic production. Um, that, um, you know, we're looking at insurmountable uh, amounts of plastic produced every single year 
um, statistics, you know, upwards into the billions of tons of plastics uh, produced annually? And how is it that we deal with that? And my question to Anil was, will other technologies find their niche in solving the plastic problem? In other words, it's not going to be a one solution or one size fits all to address the plastic problem. And I think there's room for uh, multiple players in the space uh, as applicable to the niche that they're looking to solve uh, within each of the complex layers of addressing the plastic problem. So I would say that like uh, not a single, single company will be able to address all the plastic problem because there are so many different kinds of plastic like chain growth and step growth plastic. So what we need is like a combined uh, solution. Like I, I envision like a, a analogous to refinery, petroleum refinery, where you have like a sorting, like a distillation column, separating different fractions of material. So same thing I see with sorting of different plastic feedstock. And, and basically uh, whatever is mechanically recycled should be mechanically recycled. And what is not, we can actually use our technology. And Azuro technology plays a nice role in bridging that. Like, so we can take, uh, the material which is rejected, uh, not suitable for mechanical recycling. We can take a mixed uh, uh, polymer feed, like we can get polyethylene, polypropylene mixed together or even polystyrene. Again, it depends on the end application. If you are looking for NAFTA cracker feed, we will limit to polyethylene, polypropylene, and we can uh, convert them into high value platform chemicals. I wanted to get a little bit uh, better uh, in touch with um, uh, Anil and how long he had been with Aduro, I asked him. And I also asked him where he thought here in 2023, um, where in his assessment he thought um, where we were um, with the technology, the hydrocamyletic uh, technology. Uh, this is where he introduces the uh, coin of being a platform technology and does discusses the multi-use application here. So for my viewing audience to understand here, how big that is in understanding that this is not a one-use case. Uh, Anil uh, doubled and tripled and quadrupled down many, many times in explaining Aduro's uh, multiple-use case here. And Anil goes on to explain um, the three-tier um, and their focused application here um, in 2023 on where they are placing the majority of the focus uh, and use case uh, over their hydrolytic uh, uh uh, hydrochemolytic uh, technology uh, in its use case and application. So uh, I have been with Aduro for 10 years. Uh, so what we have developed is what we call is a platform technology. So hydrochemolytic technology is not just for plastic, it's a platform technology. And so far we have explored three areas of its application. One is uh, heavy oil or asphaltene subgrading. Uh, the second area is renewable fuels using uh, what we call is waste uh, uh, like yellow grease or brown grease from the restaurants or the grease traps. And, and then the third technology is plastic uh, upcycling. So, so in case of uh, plastic upcycling, what we have demonstrated is this technology uh, works uh, in the batch system. We have proven the chemistry. Uh, we have found out the blanket conditions. What we have also studied is like effect of different contaminants. So in case of contaminants, what we are looking at is like whether uh, the contaminants affects the process chemistry, is it process design or, and where does it end up? So that's what we are looking at and we are making like a complete array of different contaminants because contaminants itself are very broad, like they could be intrinsic which is means already present in the plastic while making different uh, pellets or maybe uh, products. Uh, then the extrinsic contaminants could be like uh, ketchup bottles where you have like residual food uh, oil or other materials. So what we are looking at is like taking each and every component and in analyzing it how does it affect and we are looking at the three criteria where, where does it fit. And once we are uh, we have far ahead along uh, this path, now what we are doing doing is taking this system and translating into a continuous process. So the burning question on every investor's mind and anybody who follows the Aduro technology story is, we know that the technology has been uh, bench tested where it was incepted. And that was the time when they segued and got the third party verification uh, to give everyone the uh, assurance and, and double down that the technology works. It works. Now we take the follow-on question, and, and I questioned Anil on the ability of the technology to go from its current state and scale up. And I asked him, is it easy to scale up? 
and he offers the following comments. I, I wouldn't say it's easily scalable, but we are pretty confident that uh, we will be able to scale up because uh, we do have experience with the heavy oil system. So where we were uh, taking asphaltins, which are nothing but uh, nature's polymer, and we were able to take it apart, uh, uh, apart those molecules and upgrade the product so that we can make it uh, pipelineable, reduce the metal content. So looking at that, what we have done in that area and what we have found that when we translated our results from batch system to continuous, we actually improved the process chemistry. We had to use milder conditions and, and uh, reduce the space time required for the process. So we are confident that the same thing will be applied to this uh, plastic project. And, and we are moving forward with that. So what we have built so far is like a, a continuous system which can handle up to five kilogram of material uh, for plastic. Uh, we will be, uh, it's a, a mechanically complete electrical installation is done. Right now what we are doing is uh, basically uh, uh, checking up troubleshooting, like if there is any components which we need to uh, kind of uh, update it or even the heat trace, we are doing the electrical checkups. And once that is done, uh, we will have a team operating it very soon. Uh, right now, uh, in what we are doing for the team preparation is we have done all the safety training. Uh, team is well trained on uh, uh, CPR first aid. We are making them ready for the operations. Okay, so Anil gave us a um, a little bit of foreshadowing uh, with regard to the R2 reactor, which is capable of handling the five kilograms of continuous flow. Okay, so I wanted to demonstrate to the audience how we have progressed from the batch um, uh, process going from the bench to the batch testing. And even Anil alluded to having to scale back the technology, the, the chemistry, because it worked so well um, and actually reduced the heat um, when, we, when we started to move toward the continuous flow and the evolution of the technology. But you guys are going to have to stay tuned. I'm going to split this video um, and the coverage into um, probably a three or four part series. You're just going to have to follow it through. I wanted to split it up into usable pieces so you can get the most value out of the information. I'm very, very aggressive with making sure that the intent of the content that was captured up there really pays forward some of the amazing things that are going on with the internals of this company. It is absolutely my intent to portray the feeling that I got when I left there about how devoted the Aduro team is to this cause. Uh, and hopefully, uh, after reviewing this content, you found as much value in it as I have in, in really understanding the internals of, of what goes on day-to-day -day at Aduro, uh, full well understanding that many of you will never have the chance to actually do a site visit as I have. So I would invite you to stay tuned for follow-on uh, chronicling as we follow this story through. We'll finish up at the lab and we will actually provide you the insights of the R2 reactor and the walkthrough of what has been mechanically complete and electrically complete. My understanding is just here recently, the electrical uh, certification has just already come through and the training and the learnings that came out of the building of the R2 and putting the chemistry um, aligned with the continuous flow reactor is really starting to accelerate the excitement for Aduro and finally seeing this continuous flow in a capacity that is going to provide customer engagement to the extent that customers can actually see what is possible on, yes, a, a small scale, as Anil admitted to, but my press to Aduro was to really suggest that we may be looking at the potential for um, that scale up and the potential for the R3 commissioning in much grander volumes, taking the R2 learnings and actually evolving to the R3 here um, at some uh, catalyst forming uh, event here for Aduro here in the short term, maybe even as early as monitoring the company through 2023. So it'll be very, very exciting. You're going to need to stay tuned for the opportunity for those follow-on rollouts as I continue my chronicling of my site visit of Aduro Clean Technologies. If you guys enjoy the opportunity that is made possible through the Independent Investor Channel, I would invite you to subscribe to the channel. Aduro is one of the very, very few companies that I have on my very, very short list of companies that I'm absolutely convinced about the prospects of the future. And you're going to have to subscribe to the message 
Become part of the community. It'll cost you nothing. Cover the Aduro story. Put it in your watch list. Start to stay tuned to the news releases as I and some of the few other channels are providing to you. If you have questions, leave them in the comments section of this video. Anything that was said during the totality of this video, please leave those in the uh, comments section below as that will strike up a dialogue on this topic. And I will just say this in closing, the plastic problem has never been so real, but it is companies like Aduro that are making huge, huge waves in a capacity that I still consider undiscovered. And it's going to be amazing for me to pay the story forward as we evolve the story and I share with the grander audience the findings from my site visit on Aduro Clean Technology. Thank you so much for tuning in to this part one of the Aduro Site Visit Chronicling, and good luck in your investment future.